Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. What we're doing today is we're going to fix this C-clamp that is accidentally cut. We're going to groove it from both sides like you have to do with any thick metal repair. We're going to TIG weld it and we're going to fix it. Also going to talk about identifying metal, some tricks and tips for that. Spark testing and using a file and something else that you may not have thought of. Well, let's do it. All right, what happened here is somebody was stack cutting some metal and walked off, got a phone call, something, and anyway, came back and almost had cut all the way through it. Just a little bit holding it together, but we're going to fix it. It's an Armstrong drop forge clamp, a good clamp, no need in, no need in scrapping it. But first, we want to get a little idea, got to clean it anyways, so we're going to get a little idea from the sparks on what we're looking at here. I looked in the uh, metals and how to weld them book, the welding encyclopedia. I pulled up a spark test chart on Wikipedia, and this appears to be something that, like mild steel, fairly low carbon steel, as opposed to this tiller tine, which is likely to be higher carbon steel or high manganese or possibly high chromium steel. These little squiggly sparks didn't match anything in the chart. So sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't work. The chart doesn't match anything, but it is a piece of information for you. You can also just get a piece of scrap that you know what it is and compare the sparks to that. Now I froze the, the image here. You can see the streamers are coming out, but the little bursts out there, there's not a whole lot of those little bursts. So that's one indicator that it's going to be fairly low carbon steel. So I got it all cleaned up. because I'm, I'm going to TIG weld this thing today. It's just going to be more fun to do that. Now I'm going to let you in on a little trick here. This is something that's really helped me uh, in identifying metal and telling me what I'm going to be up against. I'm going to take the TIG torch and I'm going to very quickly puddle a little corner. Now this is, I know this is mild steel. It's just 1020 steel. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to puddle it really quickly. And then I'm going to take a file and cut them. I'm going to try to cut them with a file. Now, I'm pretty sure this is going to cut really easily. This one I'm not sure of because I don't know what, what metal it is. But if it has enough carbon or enough uh, combination of car carbon and chromium and vanadium and stuff like that, it'll harden. So if it doesn't harden, I know I'm home free. If it does, I know I'm going to be up against a little, you know, something a little bit more difficult and more, more likely to crack or get brittle. So both of these little areas that I puddled are filing very easily. So I know for a fact that they just, it's just not possible that they got much carbon in them. Now contrast this, that with uh, this cast iron manifold here. Files really easily right there. But when I, when I take the uh, TIG torch and, and puddle the corner of it, and then try to go over that with a file. Again, it's just like red hot all the way to ice water with all that mass around it pulling the heat out. If it's got a lot of carbon in it, it's going to harden. Now, now cast iron has upwards of two full percent, sometimes way more than that, and it will harden like Japanese arithmetic. You can see that the file didn't even didn't even skim it. It was like trying to file a ball bearing or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead with the repair here. I'm going to cut into there. Make a nice groove from one side first and then get some tacks on the ends. Kind of hold it together a little bit. A tack on each end and then I'll just put the first pass in there with the TIG. Now I'm going to use 309 filler. Again, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this hasn't got hardly any ca carbon in it, but when I don't know, when I don't know exactly what I'm welding, I use 309. If I know it's steel and I don't know it, I usually use 309. I used to tell people you know, Hastelloy W is the way to go when you don't know. Well, if you if you got access to free Hastelloy W, that might be a good idea. But that stuff's over a hundred dollars a pound in some places, so 309 is probably 10 or 15, and it makes a lot more sense. So also 312 is a good all-purpose rod for maintenance when you know you're, you you know you've got steel, but you don't know exactly what kind of steel. 309 or 312 is a good idea. Now, any, anytime you're doing a repair on something thick like this, this is how you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to get full penetration or close to full penetration. You're going to have to groove it out. So I just did this from one side, went ahead and put a pass in it, and I'll flip it over and then I'll groove it out from, from the other side the same way. It's kind of hard to always get the groove from both sides, and plus I didn't want to grind out that, that one little area that was holding things together. So I got a, this, this side grooved out pretty good now. It's time to lay that pass in there. And I probably should have grooved it just a little deeper, but you don't always have to get complete penetration. And, and I'm, I'm doing build up here. It's going to have a little reinforcement on it. I'm pretty confident that it will never come apart. Just going nice and slow, watching the front of the puddle. Probably using about 100 and, 
20 to 140 amps, 332nd tungsten, 2% lanthanated. I use that as my all around electrode. And the 332nd 309 filler wire. You got to taper off nice and slowly too when you're using 309 on carbon steel, or you can leave a, a crater crack. Now you want to let it cool a little bit between passes. You don't want to just camp out on a thing and, and weld back to back passes, or otherwise it just gets so oxidized for one thing that it doesn't weld very good. So walk off and get a drink when you're doing a repair like this is, is a good idea. A drink of water, that is. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> now you, you can see those ridges on the end that are cast and, and forged into this part for rigidity. I'm having to come back then after I make these passes and, and add a little bit in those areas to kind of contour and uh, build them up. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm just going to put a little mound of weld to try to halfway match that little ridge. Then flipping it over, I'm alternating sides so it doesn't pull uh, one direction more than the other. And just putting that second pass on this side. Same thing, trying to add a little extra metal there where there's a big wider groove. And right here, I'm probably using just a little bit more amperage than I need to be. Probably just getting impatient, trying to get it done. It's not going to hurt anything, but, you know, just a, just a little bit hotter than it should be. Now you can see that big wide area there where that ridge is forged into this thing. I'm going to have to come back in just a second and kind of build that up. I'm adding some extra metal right here as I taper off. Letting it cool again, giving a wire brush so I don't have to weld over all that oxidation. But I do have these little areas like this on each end that I've got to add some extra metal in. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm using a, a stubby gas lens kit. I've got a 17 air-cooled torch, but I'm using a stubby gas lens kit. Makes the torch smaller and, and gives nice uh, coverage, shielding gas coverage. That's helpful on ends like that. So now I got it kind of contoured with those ridges, and now I'm just going to do one final pass to kind of try to make it look decent. And I've still got to do a little bit of adding of metal right here where it's a little low. Just pushing a little metal in there before I take off out of the starting gate and then I'll just motor on. You notice sometimes I'm leaving the rod in the puddle, sometimes I'm not. I'm just trying to show you both ways. Both ways are acceptable on certain types of material and certain applications. Really no reason to take the rod out of the puddle right here. Dipping it in and out does let you watch the front edge of that puddle and kind of ensures a fusion, but some metals it's a, it's a given almost. Taper off nice and slow again, not to leave a little fish eye, and there you go. That's done. So we're going to call it done. All right, well, thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.